Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's currently 8 in the morning and I'm filming this video for you. So if I look a little tired, I am. So thank you for pointing it out. So I got a comment from Lady Mel. So hello Lady Mel, this video is basically for you and everyone else that's going to be starting clinicals or anyone that's going through school and wants to think about being a respiratory therapist, this is what you have to look forward to. This video is basically gonna be about clinical school, what it was like, how it was at the different hospitals, etc. Let's get into the first question. So the first question is, what do I even bring to clinicals when I go? What I brought was basically, I brought my stethoscope, obviously. Gotta listen to people. I also, would bring a pen because that's something I always forgot during clinic. So you need to write down if something changes, what happens during the day for night shift, or if you change their settings or something. Like you just, you need a pen. I also brought my lunch every time I went to clinic. You don't have to do that. The hospitals do have food, but sometimes different hospitals have like not so good of food. So like, I'm just saying, I'd bring your own food, but that's just me. I also would bring some schoolwork. Since you're in school, you know, you always have stuff to do. So I always brought my school stuff because basically my program was you go to different hospitals. Like we went to several different hospitals. So sometimes you go to a hospital that isn't as busy. So you'd be able to get a lot of schoolwork done because you're sitting there. So I'm just saying, Bring your school stuff just in case you have extra time because I felt like that helped me not have as much to do when I got home. My number one thing, I literally won the most hydrated award from my class. I would always bring a water because you never know if you're going to have access to a ice machine slash water machine or like, I don't know. You need to have water because hydration. My last and final tip on what you need to bring to clinic Caffeine. I literally always brought caffeine. Like, always had a coffee or a Celsius because some hospitals I went to started at 6.30. Some of them started at 7. It just kind of depended on where I went. But guess who needed a coffee? So always bring your coffee because caffeine helps the world go around. So, let's get into question number two. So, question number two, I'm going to read from my handy dandy laptop because it's a long one. How your preceptors were? Did they let you do a lot or did you shadow? Did they explain things or did you have to speak up to get the experience you needed? So basically, this depends on the preceptor. Sometimes you get really good ones, other times you get ones that simply want to do their work and go home. But at the end of the day, your preceptor should know that you are there to learn and get the experience that you need to be a good therapist. But I feel like sometimes, people forget where they came from. You may have to be like, hey, would you mind if I did that? Or, hey, would you mind if you like showing me this? Or if they tell you you wanna do something and you're not comfortable doing it because you haven't done it a lot, maybe ask if you can just watch because that's something I did, especially like first week ever because I was scared to do a breathing treatment. I was like, hey, do you mind showing me what to do because I haven't done this before. This is my first week, etc." A lot of them are really sweet people. Like I had so many great preceptors from many different hospitals and they don't mind teaching you. Some of them do, <laughs> but other times people are very willing to help you and they want you to come to their hospital most of the time. So they are really nice. I just want to throw out there also, you were there to make an impression on these people at these hospitals because you may work there later. So go into every hospital being like excited to learn, excited to be there because they will notice if you're not and they will not hire you after school. If you walk in with a bad attitude all the time and always complaining and never want to do anything, they're gonna know. And I'll let you in on a secret. All the hospitals talk. So if you're bad at one hospital and rude, I'm just gonna let you know other hospitals probably know. So that's something to keep in mind. I just want to throw it out there. Treat everyone how you would want to be treated. 
That goes for patients, preceptors, pe friends, family, like anyone. Treat them with respect and how you would want to be treated because that's very important. And bedside manners are very important. So yeah, you would get a lot of experience, especially if you had like the same preceptor a couple times because they know you and they trust you. If you prove to them that they can trust you. Most of the time, if I had a question, it was explained to me. I never really had a problem with that. They were always pretty good about explaining things. So that was great. Let's move on to question number three. So question number three, was there a checklist of things you had to complete slash try? Yes, throughout each semester of clinic, it was five semesters, I had to make sure to get all my checkoffs for that semester. Hello, bam. Anyway, yes, there are checkoffs you have to do in order to graduate. So first semester was patient assessment and breathing treatments, which my professors came and watched me do in the hospital and then checked me off. Second semester was trach care and open suction and closed suction. So basically I had to do trach care, which means I had to clean around it, clean the inside, take out the inner cannula, clean it, put it back, make sure everything's good and clean. So I did that one, which was the worst one, by the way, because my professors thought it was funny to get the like hardest people to be able to clean their trachs. Cause some people their necks like they stay down so it's hard to get to the tricks so that was a fun one so then i also that semester had to do closed suction and open suction closed suction is on a vent vented patient usually they have basically a ballard if i i'll put a picture of what a ballard looks like it's a closed system basically so that you're not open to infection open suction is where you can take them off their oxygen, their trach collar, or like you could take them off the vent and have a sterile process which you shove the suction catheter down their trach and suction and then put them back on their oxygen while staying sterile. You'll learn that in school. It sounds a lot harder than it is. And at the time I really thought it was hard, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be fine. So third semester, I had to do my ABG checkoff, which was terrifying at the time. Terrifying. I was scared to poke someone with a needle. Also, I had to know how to pull from an art line, which is basically someone who is vented for a long period of time usually has an art line in. It basically enables you to be able to draw an ABG without having to poke them every time. And then fourth and fifth semester, is basically you're in the ICUs a lot or in the ER. So you have a lot more vented patients. So you get to learn a lot about the vent and deal with people on the vent and learn how the vent works. So yeah, fourth and fifth semester, basically you just have to know how to do everything and you basically work for free. But you do have a patient ventilator assessment checkoff. So that's some of the checkoffs that I had to do. I'm sure I missed a couple, but I think I hit them almost all on the nail. There's a lot of checkoffs, but I swear once you're able to get the feel for it, you're fine. Okay, let's go to question number four. Um, don't ask. It's for, it's to protect myself from my dogs. So question number four, did you get a lot of hands-on with a variety of ventilators? Yes. So basically, a lot of different hospitals have different ventilators. So yes, I did get a lot of different ventilator varieties because I went to plenty of different hospitals. So mainly a lot of the ones that I saw were Draegers. There was a couple different other ones, but honestly, that's my one that I find to be my favorite. I don't know if I'm just biased because that's the one I use every day at work, but I felt like it was my favorite when I was in clinic because I don't, it's just, has so many things that you can do with it. And I'm sure other ones do too. I just never really got to use the other ones to their full potential. I'm gonna answer one more question here because that one was kind of short. What was your experience like with peds in NICU clinicals? So yes, I did get to do some peds in NICU rotations. I did have a couple of NICU slash peds checkoffs that I had to do. It was basically the same as adults, but with kids, you just have to know how to do them with kids. Good explanation, Elena. Um, yeah, I freaking love pediatrics. Okay, I love the kids, I really do. Even though it's sad that, you know, they're sick 
And sometimes you have really, really, really sad cases, which I did. Yeah, I just really like them. I think I just have like a passion for the children. Like I really, I don't know. I just want them to get better. And usually they're so cute. Like one time I had this kid and he had like a YouTube channel and like he was, it was just so fun. And like, I don't know. I feel like kids just give off like a different vibe that adults don't, which I do love my adults, but I'm just saying, I do love my kiddos. The NICU, I did also enjoy. I kind of like an older NICU more than a really tiny little baby. So the baby being like the size of my hand kind of creeps me out only because like they're so teeny tiny, I'm so scared to hurt them. Or like, I'm so scared for something to happen. So I think that's just like me. But I got to go to the hospital where they had older kids in the NICU and I was like, oh my gosh, I love them. So I'm gonna just finish my video here. <laughs> I'm just going to answer all the rest of the questions right here because I'm comfortable and I don't want to move. So I'm going to answer this question next. She said, when you become a preceptor someday, what will you do differently or the same for your students? So I do want to be a preceptor one day. I want to be able to teach people and I want to be able to make them feel comfortable because sometimes I had preceptors that I wasn't feeling the most comfortable with and I want everyone to feel comfortable and everyone to get the best experience possible in clinicals because it's going to be your job. So like, it's hard to say what I would do different because a lot of preceptors that I had were great and helped me through everything and talked me through everything. But I guess what I would make sure that I do is make my students feel comfortable. I would make sure that they understand why we're doing certain things. I'd also, if we had time, I would try to get them to see everything that I could. And I would just also make sure that everything like is a good time because I don't want anyone to go home feeling bad about themselves or not excited for respiratory because I like my job, I really do. And I want everyone to like it as much as I do. So I would try to just make sure I am a good preceptor who encourages my students to succeed. Now we're just gonna talk about like how my clinical experience was, how, what were my favorite things, what were my hardest, experiences etc so i would have to say my favorite thing about clinic in general throughout my five semesters was probably being able to go to the children's hospital what is she doing so some of my favorite things for sure was being at the children's hospital that i was able to go to because i love my kiddos i really do also i liked being able to work with I work at a hospital now and I also did clinic there. So I like being able to meet and develop a kind of relationship with people that were my future coworkers. So that was nice. I also enjoyed meeting different preceptors because I feel like I have a bond with a couple people at different hospitals and I do kind of miss them though. I don't know, I felt like certain hospitals just felt like families and I love that and it was a great experience. Some of the hardest things that I went through, uh -huh. Uh -huh. one time I got to go to a hospital that I will not name and I literally have never been so unwelcomed in my life. I was literally put in like basically another part of a room. Barely anyone talked to me. No one asked me to go with them anywhere. I didn't even know who my preceptor was that day. And like, basically when I feel like I'm not wanted, I'm not gonna go make an effort to try to figure out who my preceptor was. I wasn't, cause I was so upset. Like no one talked to me, literally no one talked to me. It was weird. Like all I got asked was, hey, are you gonna eat lunch? So basically needless to say, I did not go back to that hospital. I felt so unwelcomed and so I was so upset that day. Like, I've never been so mad in my life. I literally was, like, texting my professors and on the phone with them, and I do not do that type of thing. I was just so angry. So, I just want to say for all the hospitals out there, y'all need to make sure that students feel welcome because it's really discouraging when you're a student and you go to a hospital and you're excited for the day, and then no one talks to you or does anything with you. It's great. It really made me feel great about myself. So that was like, hands down, the worst experience I had. It still bothers me to this day. It bothers me so much. When I'm a preceptor, I'm gonna make sure that never happens to anyone because I do not like that. I do not like that one bit. So yes, that's just a couple things that 
I wanted to answer because I felt like my girl Mel had some great questions that I felt like a lot of other students might want to know and I would love to talk more about this kind of thing if you want to hear about school if you want to hear more about clinic if you have more questions I would love to answer them so yeah if you have any questions leave them in the comments also don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel because it really helps me out and I love you guys and I hope you're having a wonderful week and yeah I'll see you guys next time bye